Hello everyone, today we are looking at the game Battle Brothers. It is a turn-based slash real-time strategy game, PG game, and it's pretty cool. So, starting off, you get a campaign. You got difficulties, and you get to choose a banner. So I'm gonna call this my company. The Masters of mm, that sense. Mm. Mark the master. Why not? And I'm gonna show you off some of the features of this game. Here's how the game starts off. It starts off, somebody dies, you get an ambush. This is how the plot is delivered in these little boxes here. It'll figure something here. It's how you get quests, it's how you get everything. And we also go into combat. This is a story based scripted combat, but it does show how things generally, basic combats, combat tends to go. So. We have ranged and melee combat. Ranged combat is tends to be with bows, arrows, and crossbows. Melee combat with melee weapons. We probably didn't mean to tell you that. And the way it works is kind of similar to XCOM, where there's a percentage to hit. And it'll switch between your turn and their turn. And he's barely missed that and then we'll try to hit him and we miss he's probably gonna bleed to death then we hit hit he's just about dead do you have a melee weapon on you most characters if you're worth your two cents in this game you'll know that you're supposed to carry a melee weapon on your archer. And as you can see, melee combat goes as so. You have your armor, which will take hits for you instead of your body. And you have your health. You also have morale, which measures how likely they are to retreat. We destroyed the enemy in four rounds. Here we have our stats, number of kills, amount of damage received, damage taken, and experience taken. We also found some loot, which we're going to take with us. And we're going to leave. And now, as you can see, this game, we won, we go do something. The game is an open world. You can run across the area. The nearest town is Holland's. In towns, you can get jobs and such. Jobs have their own little modules, such as Amber Collector, Ruins, Fishing Huts. Different villages have different materials there. Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, we're getting a quest here. You'll find out... He tells you to go recruit people. Now, as I said, the town, it has various things that show what it does. This produces fish. It also produces amber. It has ruins here. Now, we have our own quest. We visit Sewhurst, southeast of Holland. This sand fields. Sewer? Yeah, Sewer. That's an unfortunate name. Place must be a jump. Recruit three more men and buy weapons and armor. I'm going to go and buy that southwards. I'll speed this up to where I get there. Along the way, you can have random events ca happen. For instance, as the silhouette of Sewer appears on the horizon, Raymond secrets a word. I've never been there myself, but I've been around it. Cities are expensive, much more than wholeness and villages. The merchants have everything we need. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They'll have real weapons, not just farming pools. Good to browse, a few bargains. But they'll also try to sell without breaking you apart. There's so much sneeze on it. Don't get swindled. As he said, big cities have better but more expensive goods in them. They also have more people to recruit from. There's a kennel. We can get dogs here. I'm not going to take one just quite so yet. We can hire troops. We need to hire three guys. They each have a little biography and up cost and daily fronts. The wage and the amount you have to pay to hire them on. Storm is out there fishing, but disaster struck when he lost his best friend at sea. They also have a different career. Careers provide different bonuses. I don't remember what Fisherman does. He is an adventurous noble, so as you can see, he has higher bravery, higher melee skill, but lower range defense. He is also extremely expensive, but will be better starting off. War dogs unleashed by this character start at confident morale. He's a hound master. I want him. He is a miner. He has higher hit points, but lower maximum fatigue. I'll keep his mind on him. I'll take him. And I'll take him. Now we have our full retinue of soldiers. Let's buy some. First things first, we'll buy a dog. Um, I'll take Teal, the war dog. And now we'll buy weapons. There are various different weapons with various different stats. Throwing nets. Well, they'll root a target in place, gets destroyed when you use it. If you have one-handed, you have bludgeons, you have axes, they all do different damages and such. You also have armor, clothes, tunics, as well as food and water. D counts different amounts, depends on where you are. More expensive in the city than the village, I think. So I'm going to take a tunic as armor. Hood is armor. Another hood is armor. That's a 50% shield. That'll break if we use it. A pitchfork, because it has two range, whereas most weapons have just one. Um, a scrimmix. And a spear. Actually, I'll take an axe, too. This should be just about everything we'll need to arm ourselves. So let's go in here. Here, we have all of our guys and see all of their equipment. As you can see, they also have their stats down here, bonuses and such. Here are the moves they can use with this weapon and this armor. They also have their stats. He's a background. He's one of the original co companions. Higher bravery and higher melee. He was also fat. More hit points, less fatigue. He gets tired easier. Some of the weapons are two-handed, such as the axe. Now, he's one of our more valuable guys, so I'm going to try and armor him up. He's one of the older guys, too. I'm going to have him have his bow out first. And now we have Espen. Espen, where are you? You're the Hound Master. I forgot how to equip these hounds. Um, Alright, there we are. Now we have him equipped. I'll also give him a spear as a weapon. And here's this fisherman. Oh, he will retreat when his morale is low. That's not very good. That is indeed quite bad. So I'm going to give him a bad weapon for it. Um, he can have the scrimmix. And here is Ravan than him. He has less resolve because he's faint hearted, but he's a miner, so yeah. And we'll equip him. We'll give him the two handed weapon because we need a pikeman or something. You can also dismiss. You have the stats down here. You have hit points, body armor, morale, resolve, and initiative. They can all be leveled up when they level up. Now our quest is to return to Conrad the Merchant in wholeness. So we're going to go back there.
And here we're back, and we have the quest. Finally, you're here. He found one of the formal men. Um, he's picking drinks with my ballad. We had a nice little talk, and now Ho where Hogard is. He's in some small hut in the southeast of here. Now, this should... There he is. Now we're going to go over there, and this will be a base battle. So now that this is a base battle and not an outside battle or anything like that, they're going to be better prepared than we they would be otherwise. They're going to have more soldiers and better weapons. So we're going to have to attack them where they're prepared. As you can see, it'll tell you the basis of how many troops there are. There's a few bandit thugs and a bandit marksman. In exchange for this higher difficulty, there's also higher reward and better loot. So we're going to go ahead and do it. It's also usually where a quest will originate. There's a few bandit thugs and a bandit marksman. That's an archer, and maybe three or four bandit thugs. Expect to lose some men. Much like, um, much like XCOM, soldiers are very, um, as they say, expendable. Don't, ex don't, don't expect them all to survive. You know, I'm gonna pull them back here. Raymond, you, that's not quite what I meant. You pull back here. I came kind of closer than I want to. Alright, I'm gonna have... I really don't like Ray-Ban being all the way down here. That's not where I want him. Now I got him up here. I'm gonna go ahead and... There, we got a good hit on him. As you can see, he's got two range. Which means we can hit people without being hit ourselves if we're smart about it. So I'm gonna pull this guy around the side. And I'm gonna pull this guy up here and I'm gonna pull this guy up here and now we're gonna fight okay so I can throw a net I'm gonna throw it at him so that way he's no longer in danger okay so I have 41 on him a 52 on him so I'm going to move my guy over here so that way he can try and shoot that guy. Oh gosh, that's not good. Alright, now go ahead and hit that thug who's stuck in the net. We hit him, we did some pretty good damage. And we just lost one guy. And I'm going to go ahead and tell, um, buddy boy over here to- Oh sh- They will get an attack of opportunity if you try to run. He is better equipped than most of us, so we are at quite the disadvantage if we try something. Spearwall. We don't want to release the war dog yet, because that guy will probably just take him out. It's there. And now we'll go ahead and fight him. We stabbed him, and we stabbed him again. He got 43% against him, and we hit him. Oh no! That's not good. Oh, come on, just kill him already. We're going to lose our archer here, most likely. And he misses, and he misses. So we're going to hit him back. And then we're going to move this guy over here. Oh, Jesus! That's not good. Now, we don't really have much of a choice other than to knife fight with him at this point. I'm gonna try to puncture. Let's see. We also have the special ability, Repel, which allows us to push someone back. Why bother? We're just gonna take a chance and hope that it hits but it didn't and now we're gonna stab him and he's dead and now we're gonna move up here and we're gonna release the war dog over here so that way he can go and deal with that archer or not or maybe he's just gonna go and attack that guy up there which I hoped he wouldn't
crap. God dang it! As you can see, attacks of whatever. Which means that you can't disengage. You can't disengage in combat or else it'll get destroyed. And then we'll move him here. And we killed the archer. That's good. It's one problem done with. One less problem without him. Alright, we got a hit in there. Now if we just surround him, his morale will go down, he'll be less able to fight, and we'll get higher chances to hit. So we're moving in to surround him. Fifty-seven percent. Oh no! God dang it, of course that's gonna happen. Uh. And then we're gonna try him. We're just gonna keep on trying to hit him. But this is easier said than... Oh, we did it. Now as you can see, we took 50% casualties there. That's three deaths. And I'm not very happy about that. But we got some good loot. I am happy about that. So we're just going to pick all of it up. Including gold, tools and supplies, ammunition, medical supplies, grains, salt. Here is our money up here. We have provisions. This is food to feed people. Tools and supplies to fix stuff. Ammunition for bows, medical supplies for healing. So let's look at who we got left. We got three people left. That's the majority of the originals dead. But we can level up. You have various different offensive and defensive utility tools. Such as offensive, which does extra damage against armor, shields, um, better area effect, better critical damage against stunned enemies and against downed enemies. Whereas defensive, it's hit points, better shields, deflecting, battle forged. And utility is two extra bags, taunting, swapping items for free, moving cheaper, shield bashing, and student. I'm going to go ahead and give him student because I want him to level up quicker in the future. And this guy, I'm going to go ahead and give him a shield and then make him a shield master. Well, shield expert. And hope that he just doesn't get destroyed. We also upgrade their stats. Melee skill gives extra melee damage and hit chance. Health is extra health. Bravery is extra resolve. Fatigue, yada yada yada. I'm going to also give him extra melee defense, that way he doesn't get hit as often. I'm going to go and give you hmm, a mouthpiece, and I'm going to level up I'm going to level up, and what do I want to level up on him? Melee attack, melee defense. So he's more of our defensive guy. Good job, Rambran. You tried your best. So I'm going to give you this better armor because you don't have a shield unlike everybody else. Everybody else has a shield but you. So you're more in danger. Alright, after the battle, Hogart lies dead. Skewer it into a grotesque and panic pose. He didn't weasel his way out of this one. He just took... You put a boot on him, and you go to your guys, they're like, Hey, for the company, and everybody's just dead. Which is most of us. Ray-Ban spits on his face. Let's take his head and get back. It's not a cheerful mood, but a content one. Blue horizon before a furiously rising sun. The deed is done, and the company is avenged. That's about as much closure as you can hope for. Guess so. We got pretty badly slaughtered there. Along the way, you lead the men back to wholeness as Ray-Ban picks up the pace to catch up with you. Got a moment, Captain? You nod for him to speak his mind. Battle has left armors and sh Everything's broken. That's basically what they're saying. Everybody's broken. Everything's broken. 
and we don't have to pick up everything. And that's what they're trying to tell us. So we're gonna go around here. Mountains and forest do movement penalties, by the way. Make you slower. And you go faster on the road, but there's generally, which usually more often than not, safer. You return here. Heads held much higher. And there's a force to be reckoned with as Hogart the Weasel learned too late. You carry his head, you throw it to his feet, it rolls toward him, he jumps back, startled, he approaches again, he's like, oh yeah, it's him. Conrad breads his hands, his face turning into a grimace of cold distraction. Not speaking a word, as long as there is blood coursing in our veins, as long as we hold the sword and shield, blah blah blah, mercenary company. We've done it. We did pretty good. That's what th There's this harbor here, which is fast travel, by the way. We got some money. We're going to have to hire some more people because we're all dead. He's a vagabond, so hire. I like that. I want that. Guntram, hire Max Fatigue. We'll take him. Take Steiner and a Edelbert. Now we're pretty much broke, but we got people. Now I finish that job, we're gonna have to go and we're gonna have to look for new employment. That is, a new job. Okay, this guy, ooh. Two less fatigue, he's athletic. He's, oh, and he's only positive, so that's good. I like you, buddy. You're gonna be our new, uh, one of our light footmen. Here, take some stuff. Guntram. Very brave. That's what I want to see. I'm going to give him this. The melee skill isn't very high. I don't like that. Okay, so we'll look at him. He doesn't have a weapon. Unfortunately. We'll give him a new thing. And... We'll give him a sword. Actually... Yeah, sword. Good old, good old Ray-Ban. And now I'll have Adelbert in the fighting line. And we'll give him a tunic. And we'll give him a scrimmix. And now we're basically all armed up. We're going to have to find a job. Hmm. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like anyone's hiring here, so we're gonna go down to Sandfells for a job. 